This video is brought to you by 3, bringing you 4G at no extra cost. Hey there, welcome to BTEC. It's Basil here with the Huawei Ascend Mate 7 at EFA 2014. The Ascend Mate 7 is probably the most impressive device we have seen from Huawei to date and one of the most impressive devices of the show. Why? Well, it's one of the first to ship with Cat6 LTE and it's the first octa-core device to pack Cat6 LTE. In addition, you've also got a really innovative fingerprint scanner that works with a tap as opposed to a long press like on an iPhone or indeed a swipe on Android. You've also got a newly revised user interface this is emotion ui or emui um, and it's 3.0 we think it is and it really does look a lot lot better than huawei's old styling but we're getting ahead of ourselves we're going to start off by talking around that design and you can see that six inch display takes center stage minimal bezeling up top bottom and across the sides we can pull in closer into frame so you can see just what that bezeling is there's a slight black border and then all you have is that frame you've got a huawei insignia below front-facing 5 megapixel camera. On the right-hand side, you can see you've got a volume rocker and a power button. At the base, you can see a micro USB connector. On the left-hand side, two slots, and these are for micro SIM cards or a micro SD card and a micro SIM card. What's very cool about this is that both SIM cards support Cat6 LTE. Up at the top, you've got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and on the flip side, a 13 megapixel rear-facing camera with flash, and you also have that fingerprint scanner. The fingerprint scanner, like we said, is an interesting one, and it actually does work really well, unlike any Android fingerprint print scanner that we've tried thus far. You can also see at the base is a uh, loudspeaker. As far as the enhanced sensation goes, this is a metal device. Um, it's not super comfortable to hold based on the fact the sides are really, really flat. So the corners do kind of dig into your hand a little bit for something so large, six inches, but it does feel very, very premium. And it's easy to grip once you're holding it. The back is quite slippy though. So when you do pick it up, it has got a tendency to slip. Generally though, we are impressed by what Huawei's done, um, especially around that bezeling and the look of the device more than the enhanced sensation really does make us think hmm, this is actually quite a cool looking phone. As far as what Huawei's done with the user interface goes, you can see Emotion UI is a lot flat, but that's because we've got a theme on top. The main thing around Emotion UI that's been completely tweaked is the fact that the notification tray's been tweaked, swipe across and you get all your shortcuts. If we jump out of that, we can pinch out and we don't have an overview of all our home screens. That requires a three finger pinch. Now, pinch out and you just have your home screen like so where you can customize your wallpapers your transitions and your widgets as well as your layouts layouts even extends to doing things like having a 4x5 or a 5x5 grid so you can populate your wallpaper your screen home screen sorry incredibly densely by comparison and despite that it still looks like everything has room to breathe on the large display we've got a theme on here themes are very easy to swap out and there are loads of themes available um, we expect there to be a lot more definitely there are a lot more than when we had the Huawei SN P7 in. If we apply the theme, you'll see it does take a second, but once that theme is applied, it completely changes the entire look and feel of your device. This is an unofficial Zelda theme, as you can see. Um, and again, it just looks very, very cool. All the icons are changed. And even if you go into your folders, for example, um, the folder icon is all supported as well. So that's Emotion UI in a nutshell. There are a few other cool elements, but the long and short is it's much, much better than Emotion UI of old. We didn't actually like the older Emotion UI, and this has kind of won us over a little bit. We'll have to use it and review the device before we can give you anything more conclusive. As far as the camera goes, 13 megapixels around the back, You've got a five megapixel front facing camera with extreme beauty mode. So if we view one of the photos it took of us, you can see it made our eyes way, way bigger. And there's another one. I look positively alien. Um, you can customize how much you want that beauty mode on, but like um, Huawei's done in the past, it's really focusing on that front-facing camera with um, panic panorama front-facing camera options, etc. So you can take selfies and what Huawei terms groupies, which is group selfies. Now, in terms of internals, you've got that octa-core Kirin processor, two gig of RAM and 16 gig internal memory. It's also available in a uh, three gig RAM, 32 gig internal memory variant. The Kirin Pro processor is a 925, 4A15s at 1.8 GHz and 4A7s at 1.3 GHz. So it's really two quad-core processors and it's a Mali T628 GPU. 
Battery, 4100 milliamps, that's really good. And this thing also supports reverse charging. So you can charge your iPhone if you have this and an iPhone, for example. Although with two SIM card slots, we're not entirely sure why you would. All in all, therefore, we're impressed. The Huawei Ascend Mate 7 does a good job of standing out from the crowd at E for being the only Cat 6 LTE device with an octa-core processor. But like we said, that design isn't half bad, and it's definitely a worthy entry to the smartphone market from the Chinese manufacturer. Hopefully you've enjoyed our extensive hands-on. If you've got any questions about the phone, make sure you fire them in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button, and if you like BTEC in general, click subscribe. Thanks for watching.